how to properly use the grid method for your drawings. Welcome back. If you don't know who I am, I'm a 22 year old charcoal and graphite artist that specializes in hyperrealism with surrealism. I've won dozens of international and national awards for my work, and I'm here to teach you everything that I know. So if you wanna learn how to draw like this, uh, consider subscribing. So in every tutorial that we've done so far, I'll do the grid beforehand off camera, and it's mainly because it's the same exact thing every single time. So once you know it, you kinda don't need to see it again. But I realized that I haven't done a proper video on it yet. So that's what we're gonna do today. And if you don't know what the grid method is, it's basically a method used with realism drawing that allows you to draw accurate proportions without having to trace. Basically, it's vital if you are a realism artist. It can be confusing just looking at it, but honestly, it's super, super easy. You don't need that many tools. It'll take you less than 20 minutes, but it will make your drawing look 10 times better. So without further ado, let's go over the very few tools you need for this and get into it. Ready? Let's begin. All that you're gonna need tool-wise is a roller. Now, depending on what size drawing you're doing, you're gonna want a bigger roller or a smaller roller. I like to use this metal yardstick that I got at Michael's, but if you're doing a small drawing, such as eight by 10, then just a normal one foot ruler works. Then to actually draw your grid, you're gonna want two different shades of pencils, a medium tone and a lighter tone. For medium, I just like to use HB, and for the lighter tone, I like to use H. For my paper, I use the Strathmore 500 series plate or smooth three ply. Because of how expensive it is, if you wanna use the 400 or even the 300 series, you can. The most important thing is that you use Bristol paper that is smooth, not vellum. Vellum does not allow you to achieve the smallest of details like smooth can due to the vellum's tooth. And that's it. That's all you physically need to make the grid. Start with your piece of paper. For this drawing, I want it to be eight inches by 10 inches. Using your HB pencil, we'll mark the inches on the paper one at a time. Now, if you want a border around your drawing for taping purposes, which I highly, highly recommend, add two inches to each side. That way you can have a one inch border going around your drawing. So instead of marking off 10 inches on this side, we're gonna mark 12. Then flip the paper over and go to the other end. Oh, just kidding, not so fast. This is the biggest error I see when people start their grids. By flipping the paper over, if you mark off inch by inch and the paper isn't the exact length you want it to be, the inches won't line up perfectly and you'll have diagonal lines instead of straight lines. So instead, I recommend not moving the paper at all and just sliding the roller up. That way you know the lines are gonna be straight. Again, I mark off 12 inches one at a time and then flip to the other two ends. Again, we want this to be eight inches, but we want it to add two inches for the border. So I'm gonna mark off 10. And then once we're done, we're gonna flip it and go to the other side. Oh, remember, it's really easy to forget, but don't move the paper. Just slide the roller up or down. The next step is to connect the lines of the trim, basically the overflowing paper. Because we already accounted for a border, we don't need excess paper just kind of sitting there. So I line the roller up against the lines that we made on the parallel sides, draw a nice straight dark line with the HB pencil. And then we're just gonna get the scissors and cut that off. Now, before you cut off the excess paper, make sure you're not cutting off the inch indicators that we made in the beginning. A very common error that I literally just made. And my honest reaction to making such a rookie mistake. It's fine though, it's an easy fix. Just grab the roller and mark the 10 inches again. Now we're gonna make the border lines. We wanna be sticking with the HP pencil because we want these lines to be darker than the rest. So line the roller up with the first inch markers that we made on both parallel sides. Make sure the lines are nice and dark because this is basically gonna be your border for the entire drawing. And there we have it, a one inch border going around an eight by 10 open space. Now we just connect the dots. We wanna be using the lighter tone pencil for this step because these lines are gonna be on the drawing. And if you're drawing something that has a lot of white space or a lot of highlights, you don't want those lines to be visible. So it is so important how hard you press on this step. With the H pencil, as lightly as I can, I'm connecting the inch markers. When I say as light as I can, I'm barely resting my hand on the paper. The only force I'm putting on it is gravity. 
You want to be able to see it, but if you're standing about 20 feet away, you want it to be invisible. Flip the paper and connect the rest. Get up nice and close and make sure that all the lines are visible, but none can't be easily erased. An extra step I like to do for my larger drawings is to number the grid. It just makes it a lot easier when you're referring back to your reference photo. I forgot to trim this little excess right here. There's your drawing paper with a grid on it, ready to be filled in. The grid's visibly there to help you sketch, but once you start filling in, it'll blend right into whatever you're doing. Now for applying the corresponding grid on your reference photo, we're gonna use this picture of a pizza slice that I took. Now I have an iPhone and this is how I do it. So in your camera roll, go up to edit and swipe across until you get to the mono filter, AKA black and white. Then go down to crop, go up to the ratios and select what ratio you want it to be in so it matches the paper. Now eight by 10 is a four by five ratio. So that's what we're choosing. Now the app that I use is grid hashtag. It's a free, very simple app to use. Once downloaded, go into it, then access your camera roll on the top right. Choose your image. It's gonna apply some grid. Go into the settings on the top left and make sure you're on the rectangle grid type. However, this only works if the reference photo is in the same ratio as your paper. Now below that, you have the columns and the rows. Columns are the lines that go up and down and rows are the ones that go left to right. Slide them to the number of inches that we accounted for. And next is the grid color. I like to use red because it stands out the most against black and white, but you can mess with these, make any color you want, doesn't really matter. This is your preference. But I like a bright red. And then below that is the width of the lines. For my experience, the sweet spot's right around three to four. Again, this is your preference. Once you're done, hit save. And there you go, a very visible but subtle grid over your reference photo. By holding down the image, you'll be able to save to your camera roll. Now I know making the reference image the same size as your paper is a little easier said than done. So we're gonna redo that whole process, but without cropping to the four to five ratio so you can see how it's done. Again, go back in and grab your non-cropped image. And you can see here that while there are eight columns and 10 rows, they are perfect squares, which will really mess you up. And that's because we're on rectangle mode and not square mode. Since last time we already cropped it perfectly to begin with. So we wanna set it to squares. So we're gonna go back up to the top left, go into settings. We're gonna click on the grid type rectangle and we're gonna change it to one of the square modes. Now this is your preference. I personally like to set it to the column only. And what that means is that it's going to lock the columns in place. And then all the overflow of the reference that we're gonna to have to trim is gonna be a part of the rows. Meaning we're gonna trim the top or the bottom, not the sides. As someone that really focuses on composition, I find it much easier to sacrifice either the top or the bottom of the reference rather than the left or the right. After that, you can just hit save. And there you go. We have eight columns, 10 rows, and then some extra there at the bottom. And then all you're gonna do is either ignore that excess at the bottom, or when you save it, go into your camera roll and just crop it off. And then you're done. You can see here while I'm drawing and filling it in, I like to mark where the intersecting points are on the grid. So at all times, I have an idea of where my grid is. So I never mess up any proportions with any of the details. And then once I'm done, I just color them in with a pencil. And that's it, it's really that easy. And there you have it. The super simple way on how I make my grid. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Let me know down in the comments what tutorial you want to see next week. If you enjoy the free tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. I'm almost done with this original drawing here behind me. So if you want to see the final product, head over to my Instagram and my TikTok. I post daily over there. I also go live on TikTok every weeknight. So come hang out. Oh, and I also now have a Patreon. If you're interested in receiving these tutorials one week early, getting one-on-one -on -one feedback from me, where I thoroughly go over your work and give you constructive criticism on what you can improve, what looks good, basically just how to make you a better artist. Voting power on what tutorial comes next, early access to content, a store discount, and a lot more. If you're interested in that, join the Patreon, link is below. I have prints of my drawings on my website. You can go check that out as well. I think that's it. Thanks for being here and hopefully see you again soon.